While energy only flows in one direction, matter cycles through an ecosystem. There are three main cycles, the water cycle, the carbon cycle, and the nitrogen cycle. The water cycle describes the movement of water through the land, atmosphere, and oceans. Number one shows the evaporation of water from the ocean. Number two shows a process called transpiration, where plants release water from their leaves. Number three shows condensation, where the water molecules bunch together to form clouds. Number four shows precipitation in the form of rain. Number five shows the runoff of that water down the mountainside and back to the ocean, where the cycle continues. The water cycle is the process by which water moves through the earth and atmosphere. The sun's rays heat the ocean. The water evaporates from the ocean. The plants release water from their leaves through transpiration. The water molecules bunch together during condensation. The water flows from the clouds through precipitation. Then the water, called runoff, flows back to the ocean. The carbon cycle describes the movement of carbon between the environment and living things. Plants use carbon dioxide during photosynthesis and give off carbon dioxide during cellular respiration. Animals release carbon dioxide when they breathe. When animals eat plants, their waste contains carbon dioxide. When the plants and animals die, the decomposing matter releases carbon dioxide. When the remains are old enough, they'll become fossil fuels, which humans burn through combustion for machines and factories. Let's try this diagram together. The number one arrow is going from the deer and tree to the atmosphere. This is cellular respiration. The number two arrow is coming from the deer and going into the ground. This is decomposition. This happens when the deer leaves waste and when it dies. The number three arrow is coming from the decomposing deer waste and pointing toward the atmosphere. This is fossil fuels. The number four arrow is coming from the atmosphere and going into the shrub. This is photosynthesis. The number five is coming from the factory and the fossil fuels. This is combustion. All right, now it's your turn. The number one arrow is coming from the atmosphere and going into the tree. This is photosynthesis. The number two arrow is coming from the plant and going back to the atmosphere. This is plant respiration. The number three arrow is coming from the deer and going to the atmosphere. This is animal respiration. The number four arrow is coming from the deer and the tree and going into the ground. This is decomposition. Number five arrow is coming from the decomposed waste, which was in the ground for a very long time. This is fossil fuels. Number six arrow is coming from the car as it burns those fossil fuels. That's combustion. The nitrogen cycle describes the movement of nitrogen through the environment and living things. Remember, DNA is made up of nitrogenous bases, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Additionally, 78% of the Earth's atmosphere is nitrogen. The nitrogen that's used up by organisms is only a very small percentage of the total nitrogen available. In the diagram shown here, nitrogen enters the living world by way of bacteria and other single-celled prokaryotes, which convert atmospheric nitrogen into biologically usable forms in a process called nitrogen fixation. Some of these bacteria are free living in soil or water, while others are beneficial symbionts that live inside of plants. 
So the animals eat those plants and they take that in that nitrogen and they either incorporate it into their bodies or excrete it as waste. Lastly, bacteria also plays a very important role in returning the nitrogen back to the atmosphere through a process called denitrification. Number one shows the nitrogen in the atmosphere entering the living world. This is nitrogen fixation, which is done by bacteria and makes nitrogen accessible to other living organisms. The bacteria on the plant are beneficial symbionts that live inside of the plants, while the ones that are free living are the ones that are um, below. Number two shows the nitrogen getting ready to leave the living world to go back to the atmosphere. And that's just denitrification, which is also completed by bacteria. Let's see if you can do this. Number one shows the nitrogen in the atmosphere entering the living world. This is called nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen fixation is done by bacteria and makes nitrogen accessible to other living organisms. The plant is eaten by the rabbit, carrying the nitrogen into the rabbit. Number two shows the rabbit and plant waste being broken down by fungi and bacteria. This is called decomposition. Number three shows the nitrogen getting ready to leave the living world to go back to the atmosphere. This is called denitrification. Denitrification is completed by bacteria. All right, all of these gases, what happens? Well, the greenhouse effect occurs when gases trap heat in the atmosphere. The two greenhouse gases that have the largest impact are carbon dioxide and water vapor. While it sounds really scary, this is actually a very normal process that maintains the Earth's temperature range. The scary part, not to freak you out, is that human activities such as burning those fossil fuels, um, certain agriculture practices, land clearing, they're increasing the amount of greenhouse gases released into the atmosphere. This is trapping extra heat and causing the Earth's temperature to rise. We'll talk about that more in the next video.